What we're going to be going over here is calculating the yield rate or the interest rate required to amortize a bond using the effective interest method. And for our example here, Corporation A purchases 9% the stated rate on the bonds here and they have uh, for $300,000 and that's their maturity value of the bonds here. And the bonds mature in three years and they pay interest semi-annually. So we're going to be looking at two separate cases here. First, where the purchase the bonds here at 98 and three quarters or that would be 98.75 percent of par uh, they're purchased at a discount because they are going to pay less for the bonds here when they purchase them than what they mature at here and then we're going to be looking at case two where they purchase these bonds at 102 and three quarters or 102.75 percent of par this is where they purchase them at a premium here so they're going to pay more for the bonds uh, than when they buy them here than what they're going to receive when they mature here um, and what we're going to be, this is the key to what we're going to be looking at here. The bond stated rate of interest here is 9% uh, per year here, but they pay out that semi-annually here. And that's given, uh, but the yield rate is not given here. So this is the key. This is really what we're looking at here. How do you calculate the yield rate and why would you calculate that real yield rate here? So we must calculate the yield or what it's called as the effective interest rate here to amortize the bonds. And we're going to be using and for this effective interest method here. Okay, so let's first go down here and let's look at the case where the bonds here were purchased at a discount. So let's go down to our, what we have to do. We have to set up this amortization schedule and you're going to uh, we're going to look at what we know here to set up the schedule and why we really have to calculate this yield rate on this bond or this effective yield right here. And that's going to be because we need to amortize this bond down here. So what's what we have here, what we do know here, let's just look at what we'd have on our amortization schedule. First, cash receipts here. Well, we were given the case here that these are 9% bonds. They pay out semi-annually, so the interest rate on a semi-annual or six, every six months here, we'd have to base that at 4.5% times the total uh, value of our bonds here. We have $300,000 worth of bonds outstanding here, so 4.5% times those $300,000 worth. We would have, in this case, we're going to bought these bonds here and we're holding them and we're re going to receive uh, as an investment here and we're going to receive this uh, a semi-annual payment here. And that is really to 4.5% times the 300000 here. So the cash receipts each uh, uh, six months here are $13,500. The other thing that we know here, we have the carrying amount of the bond um, for our amortization schedule. We start out with what we paid. That's our present value here. And we'll look at how we calculated that here. And then we have to amortize it up to its future value here. That's its maturity value. And in order to do that, we have to determine this effective interest uh, rate here. And the reason we're going to do that here is this is why we have to determine the interest revenue that we have to recognize on this bond since we're holding it. We know the cash receipts here, but because it was sold at a discount here or purchased at a discount, we have to determine the actual interest revenue that we have on this bond. Okay, so let's go up here. And how would we really uh, determine the effective interest rate or the yield rate here? Well, you use your calculator here. You can use um, Excel functions and there's different calculator functions as well to determine the yield right here but this is really the best one to so you can understand it here so what you're going to have on your calculator are these functions here you're going to have a number which stands for the number of periods that we're talking about on this for the interest rate here and then you're going to have an interest uh, uh, button here that says x determines the interest rate here I'm looking at it on a per yearly basis here and then you're going to have a present value button payment button here and the future value here of the future value button here so those are the key functions that you're going to have on your calculator here so going to our example here what we have to do when we're making the uh, determining this interest rate here this yield interest rate in this case is we have to match the interest rate to the period that we're looking at here so since we have a semi-annual payments here on this uh, bond that we're going to receive here we're going to come up with a semi-annual or an interest rate to match it so first thing you have to do determine here is n the number of periods well let's look at those those are three-year bonds 
and they had some annual payments so we have two payments per year here so that would be six semi-annual payments so for your n button here you just put in a fun uh, put in the number six here that's the number of um, periods that we're looking at here because uh, and the reason you do that here is because we well we'll go on to it here uh, you have to know the number of period put the proper number of periods in here to match the what your investment is here with what you're going to get at the maturity here so that's key here just mat get your number of periods matched in properly here based on the interest right here so next thing we'd have is our present value that's really what we paid for this bond in this case so we just go up here since it was um, purchased at a discount here it was 98 and three quarters here or 98 and three quarters percentage here times the uh, maturity value of this bond so those would be this par value of the bonds here 300,000 so we're going to come up with $294,750 after doing our arithmetic there so that's what we paid for them here present value that's what we pay for them but put it in as a negative amount here since uh, put in you have to change your sign and put that in as a negative amount then the other thing that we know here the payments those are those interest payments that we're receiving we calculated those out to be thirteen thousand five hundred dollars semi-annually here so you put that in as a positive amount and there's that payment amount thirteen thousand five hundred and then future value here well that's the maturity value of that bond or those bonds here three hundred thousand so putting everything in here then hit your interest button on your calculator that would be and that's going to give us the yield right so what calculator is going to tell you here is that you're going to get in this case an effective yield based uh, on the fact that those are semi-annual payments here of 4.8431 percent so yearly you'd have to take twice that amount here to get your yearly interest rate but really for our amortization schedule here we have to do it on a semi-annual basis here uh, twice or Pay, the interest is being paid twice a year so for our and the reason you can see we're sitting here with four decimal points here and at that yield interest rate and you can see why we have to come out with such a, a long or such a uh, with so many decimal points here so what we would do in this case for our amortization schedule we start out with that present value what we paid here that 294,750 take it times that yield interest rate here of 4.8431 uh, percentage and you're going to come up with the interest revenue of $14,275 that's the interest that we recognize here for that first six months here uh, uh, that's what we'd recognize on our income statement here for that bond since it was purchased at a discount here would be uh, $14,275 now what the cash receipts which we actually received here was only $13,500 but this is what we're going to recognize on our income statement here so this is how we'd amortize this and that's what they're talking about amortization here we just compare the um, yield or interest revenue here based on our yield right here 14,275 to the cash receipts here of 13,500 the difference here is going to give us $775 here so what we would do here we would take this $775 that's our amortized amount add it to the carrying amount here of 200,000 294,750 we come up with our new carrying amount here for the next period here to 295,525 so simply take this new carrying amount times that yield interest rate that we calculated here you're going to come up with your new interest revenue for the next period here $14,313 compare that to the cash received here those payments will always be the same here based on that 9% interest rate uh, per year but it's four and a half percent per period here uh, so we got the 13,500 again compare that to the interest the interest revenue here that we recognize and you're going to come up with an amortized discount here 813 and just add that to your beginning balance to come up with your new balance here and just proceed on in that fashion okay so that's how we determine the effective interest rate here uh, when we had and we knew what our future value was here our, I mean we knew what our present value that's what we paid for these um, bonds here and we knew what their we'd receive their maturity value this future value in the f uh, in the future here and then we also knew the 
interest payment uh, interest payments or the receipt interest cash receipts that we're going to receive on those bonds and we did it on a semi-annual basis so we come up with our interest revenue here we use that on a semi-annual basis again using the calculator okay so let's go over and let's look at the case here where we would have a premium here and we'll just go through that quickly here uh, bond purchased here at a premium that was one oh one hundred and two or three quarter percent here so this is where we're coming up with our purchase our present value on that bond those total bonds here would be that one oh two and three quarters times three hundred thousand dollars worth of bonds three three hundred eight thousand two hundred and fifty dollars worth that would be their present value here on those bonds so again uh, to determine our amortization here on those bonds using this effective interest rate method here we'll go back to our calculator here we'll just go over it quickly here um, match our periods here with uh, with so we had six and uh, periods or six uh, semi-annual payments on those bonds that goes into our number function here the present value again we use that as our premium amount again remember that's what we're paying for it here so a negative amount here goes uh, put that in and change here to a negative amount here for changing the sign on those um, on that on what we paid here, 308250 Then our payment amount, the same as we had before, 13500 here. Future value would be $300,000 here. So hit, then enter all your numbers. Make sure you got your, your negative number in here for the present value here. Hit your interest button here, and you're going to come up with a real yield right here of 3.9758%. Uh, so again, Proceeding on here, this is where we have a premium on those bonds. So just uh, understand that your arithmetic here. So you have a carrying amount that three hundred eight thousand two hundred fifty. You have to amortize it down here to the maturity value here of three hundred thousand dollars. So to do that here, all you do. The reason we came up, we had to determine that effective interest rate here. That's for the uh, base. That's the interest revenue again that we're going to be rec recognizes on our income statement for this bond, and that's the actual interest that we'd be recognizing here. So you just take that. Uh, effective rate here times your beginning carrying amount here 308,250 and then you're going to get your interest revenue for the first period here at $12,255 and just can continue on like we did with the amortized amount compare that to the cash receipts here of 13,500 and the difference is going to give us the amortized premium here of $12,045 here or $1,245 excuse me then in this case since it was at a premium here we'd have to subtract that from our beginning balance here 308,250 that gives us the new carrying value here of 3,000 five dollars and then just take that times your effective interest rate to come up with your new uh, amount here of uh, interest revenue for the period twelve thousand two two oh six compare that to the cash receipts you get your amortized premium amount here add that to your or subtract that from your beginning balance to get your um, new balance here and just proceed on in that fashion until you get down to your maturity value here so you can see going back to our calculator here uh, you, there's other ways of doing it with Excel and everything like that but uh, or other functions here on your calculator but this really is the probably the clearest and the best way to understand it here just by matching your interest rate for the period here so uh, in this case we were dealing with that semi-annual amount here but had we just looked at the period here um, Let's just say it was for three years here, and we just wanted to look at a yearly period here. In that case, we would have, instead of putting in uh, uh, six here, we would have just put in three here as our number of periods. So it says that would be just the three years here. We would still use the same present value, what we paid for it here. In, in this case, it was at a premium of 308250 And we'd also use the same future value, because that's what they'd be worth here, $300,000 in the future. But our payment here, well, that would have to be matched to the number of uh, periods. We say if we only had three periods here, our payment would be once per year, so we would have to double this 13500 And that would be up to what would that be twenty seven thousand dollars here then if put those in instead of the thirteen five put in your twenty seven thousand here and instead of the six put in the three here then hit your 
interest interest uh, button here on your calculator to get your yield rate and then you're going to come up with well I'm not showing it here but it'll be twice the 3.9758 percent it would be twice that percentage okay so going over it here anytime you're using those having to set up those amortization schedule what you will and the other thing is let's just back off here say for example we were given the effective interest rate here uh, on, for our problem and we're also given the stated interest rate here but and maybe we were given you were given the future amount here what the maturity value of that um, what those bonds would be worth but we'd have to determine the carrying amount here well we would again just go up to our calculator here same thing here uh, we have to get in the right number of periods here and then we would put in since we would have known the yield rate in this case we would put that into our calculator here but uh, and then we'd know our payment amount we'd put that in and we know our future value here we'd put that in so the only thing we'd have to just hit your key here to determine the present value and it would come up in this case it would come up with three that's what we'd have to determine it would come up with three hundred eight thousand two hundred and fifty dollars so what I'm just explaining here if you know you have to really know what four uh, you have to know four of uh, there's five variables that are going in here so if you know any one of the four if you're searching for one of those five variables and you know the other four you just put in the values uh, like for the four variables that you know and then just hit uh, to determine hit whatever variable you're looking at you would just hit that key to determine what that amount was here so not to confuse things but that's this is probably the best function on your calculator here when you're doing these um, uh, debt functions here and these amortized interest uh, methods here we have to determine your uh, effective yield here to in order to uh, set up your amortization schedule and amortize um, your amounts here or you amortize whatever investment you have either buy it at a premium and amortize it down to its maturity value or buy it at a discount and amortize it up to its maturity value so that's all I'm looking at here use your calculator to determine those effective interest rates or those yield rates if they're not given so you can set up your amortization schedules.